Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. Today I'm going to do an unboxing of the game Temple of Elemental Evil, which is a Dungeons and Dragons dungeon crawling game in the same vein as the Wrath of Ashardalon, uh, Legend of Drizzt, and Castle Ravenloft. It's a big and heavy box. It's for one to five players and it's ages 14 and up. So let's have a look at what's inside. Okay, let's have a look inside this box, Temple of Elemental Evil. Take out the lid. There's a piece of cardboard here for protection. Okay, so we have the rule book, which is not very thick. So there is some introduction about the Temple of Elemental Evil and how you set up the game and how you start playing. Something about cards and the tiles. And the decks that you have, characters. So it is a 15 page rulebook and these are some uh, frequently asked questions. Nice artwork. And there's an adventure book which is equally thin and this has a campaign if you want to play a campaign story. There's all of them in here. Plenty of adventures. So let's see there's 13 adventures in here. Cool. Here is a reference sheet with all the figures that come in the box. So you can see their names, what they are. All right. Well, here are some tiles in shrink wrap. This is the tile of the uh, Black Dragon. And here is a start tile, the entrance to the temple. Some tokens that your characters can use, a healing surge token, and there's gold here. There's three sheets in here, so... Uh, so here is a uh, village tile, two of them double ones with the villager tokens. On the other side here you can see some portraits of these villagers. There's four different ones and two of each. And on the other side of the village token there's an, uh, an earth node and a water node. So some underground uh, caves. And there's some tokens to be used in game as well. Okay, so that's that tile. There's another tile with more village tokens and more on the ground uh, nodes, the air and fire. So we got all four elements there. And more villagers and more of those tokens. And this was the tile we saw with the dragon card and the entrance. And on the other side is also a town. And the other side of the black dragon's tile, the gold coins, and these healing surge tokens. Alright, what else is in the box? Well, there's of course lots of cards. There's a big sealed packet of cards here. So let's have a look at that. Okay. So we have a, a reference card with the sequence of play that you can hand out to all five players if you're playing with five people. And there's cleric cards and they have the cleric uh, artwork and the name on the back and they look exactly like the other three uh, dungeon crawling D&D games. So that'll fit nicely. And there's their, um, their skills that you can use. So. There is the cleric. There is a fighter, which you can see here. A fighter with his skills, skill cards. There is a ranger. Powers and skills, daily power. It says so on the back what it is, as you can see there. 
So those are her cards. There is a rogue, a little halfling rogue. Also a complete set of cards. And a wizard. So more wizard cards here. All right, there are event cards. This is an encounter. And it says here it's an event and it tells you what happens once you draw them. So plenty of those. These are all encounters, a whole lot of them. And this is also an encounter, an event attack. So these are just events, something happens. And these are uh, event attacks. They are red and tells you what happens, so in case you I wonder if you can read this, yes, large boulders roll towards you, so you know, like traps and stuff, all kinds of stuff that can happen inside the Temple of Elemental Evil, and those are these encounters, there's some bad guys here, so there's the air cultists, is a monster, there's a bugbear, there's a doppelganger. There's an earth cultist. A fire bat. Uh, another. Oh, yeah, that was the earth. He had a fire cultist. The knoll archer. Hobgoblin fighter. Troglodyte. Uh, a water cultist. So that is the fourth uh, element. So that's those monsters, and then there's treasure. Can't have a dungeon without treasure. So some stuff that you can find while playing. There you go. And there's some items that you can find as well. Claws of the Umber Hulk, an exploding gem, etc. Healing potion. Yeah, so those are the treasures. Let's see what's in the next pack of cards is a smaller pack also in this handy plastic wrapping so there's more treasure here so let's have a look at those first before I move on to the rest but oh, there's actually more monsters as well so we got more fortune that you can find a bag of silver a bag of gold a cloak of protection more items So that's cool as well. And then there's more monsters and encounters. Let's have a look at the monsters first. So we've got an air elemental, an earth elemental. So these are bigger monsters you can encounter. There's an empowered air cultist, an empowered earth cultist, of course, an empowered fire cultist and water cultist and I'm expecting the fire and the water elementals as well. So that's those monsters. Uh, more encounters and more adventure cards. Okay, let's see what those are. First the encounters. So more events that can happen. So some are actually positive as well and some are negative. Yep, and there's more event attacks as well. All right, more of those. And here are adventure cards. So we've got the allies here. So those are the, the NPCs that we can find in the village. And you can bring them along as an ally. Here is an, a wormling even that you can have as an ad ally. And there's an item that is an adventure. All right. Interesting. So those are all the cards. Now on to the goodness, which is of course the miniatures. Let's see what this is. Those are bats. I think the fire bats. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, they even have little stands. Oh, I think this one broke off though, but that should be easy to fix. And they look like, you know, a sheet of flames. 
in the shape of a bat. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. You see them on their stand. Like that. There's three of those. Let's see what else is in here. We have the knolls very clearly and very large knolls. And there's a bugbear, also very big and quite detailed. And, uh, these are pretty cool, pretty uh, well done, I have to say. So, the quality of these minis is clearly very nice. And another knoll and another bugbear. So, three of each. Just put these over there. What else do we have? These are some more little guys and cultists. So we have these cultists. Um, can't quite remember what each one of them looked like from the cards, but this one seems to have oh, ah, a flaming scepter or staff. So he might be one of the fire cultists. I'm not sure though. Here's one, and looks like to be an orc with a sword. There's another one of these guys. Uh, yeah, we have the ones with the, the shield and the sword. And there's more of these, and there's the one with the with the crossbow, which was the air cultist, if I recall correctly. So there's, of course, the four different cultists. And we have, let's see, how many of each. Uh, Let's count these with the swords. One, two, three. I think three of each, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Okay, let me pick that one up. Okay, yep. Good. So, just more and more minis in here. So, these are the big elementals. We have. Oh, this is an Etten, giant two-headed Etten. <laughs> Looks really cool. He's a bit dark. I hope you can see the detail. But he looks really cool. And he has the name written on the bottom, so that's uh, easy. Let's see if these guys have their names on the bottom. Yeah, there is something. It's just not in white. This is a water cultist warrior oh, with a sword. And the crossbow was the air cultist, indeed. And this orc looking guy was the... Oh, that's the hobgoblin fighter, yeah, of course. And the one with the staff is the fire cultist, indeed. Uh, was Have I missed one? There's one with a club, which looks as if he was a earth cultist, which he is, with all the stone-like protrusions on his armor. Okay, another big guy here is the Fire Elemental. Although I have to say, from the looks of him, I wouldn't have instantly recognized him as a Fire Elemental. So yeah, this really needs some paint slapped on. If they had made him red, that would have been a bit more recognizable. But he is a Fire Elemental. So yeah, probably gonna paint these. And here is a air elemental as you can clearly see is a transparent uh, blue plastic and he has swirly curls all over so he's like a whirlwind so this one is very recognizable there's no need to paint this one if you want to keep him translucent uh, let's see where the other ones are uh, okay these are a bit smaller so we have, what does it say? This is the water elemental, but that's pretty clear. It's also blue, translucent, and it's basically lots of waves, roughly in humanoid shape, at least the top part. 
So we have that one, and we have a small earth elemental, looking pretty cool. Angry face. <laughs> Looks a bit like a Pokemon or something, but is he? that's that's cool. And here is what seems to be a Naga, a Salamander. Okay, a Salamander. Pretty cool. Lots of detail. You can see he has scales on his back as well. I hope you can see that. Well, that's pretty uh, detailed. Very nice as well. Let's look at the other bag. So there's the heroes. So this is the uh, Northern Fighter. A bit of a bent axe, but nothing that some hot water can't fix. The rugged looking woodsman fighter. There's the halfling rogue. And next we have oh I'm dropping these minis all the time. Oh this is uh <laughs> this is interesting. He has a dislocated shoulder, or she I should say, but of course easily glued. I'll just pop it back like that. This is a cleric, the female cleric dwarf, holding her um warhammer over the shoulders. That's nice. Grab that one again. Okay, that's the the, the the ranger holding her bow. Very nice. And the fifth here is the wizard, the sun elf wizard, to be precise. There's a nice orb of magic going on there. Very static pose though, but uh, she has a nice robe with all this uh, detailing in it. Should be nice to paint. There's of course the D20 that you need in all D&D games. Can't go without a D20. It's a simple black and white D20 though. There's nothing special. You know, they, they could have, you know, used a different color at least for each of the sets, but a it is what it is. Next, uh, there's uh, some more smaller guys before I move on to the big one, of course. So, uh, this creepy looking dude is a doppelganger. Kind of alien looking. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There you go. I hope. Well. Oh. Not really working with me today. Let me just put these down. Come on, camera. Yeah, there you go. Reaching out to grab ya. So that's that one. There's a couple of those in here, three. And there's also three of these troglodytes, yes. Those look funny. Also quite detailed. Nice. So three of those. And then of course the big black dragon that we saw the card of earlier. So you get this big nasty looking flying dragon. Huge jaw and the horns on his head, his uh, leathery wings. Very cool. He's got quite the wingspan. Yep, and you can set him on this transparent uh, rod that you can put into his chest here. And there's a uh, base for it as well. And let me see, there was a little notch in it. Maybe I put it the wrong side up, let me see. Yeah, there's, oh yeah, there's, there's a notch in here. So this goes in here, and this goes in here. Yep, there we go. And it says, 
Velathridos. No, Velathidros, <laughs> the black dragon. Almost got it. So yeah, it's it's a flying black dragon, which will look very cool on your game board. All right, let's see if there's more. So we got a nice plastic insert that can hold all the minis and the cards and the tiles. And there's more tiles in there. Actually quite a bit because it's still pretty heavy. So yeah, let me just get those. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of them. Let me just cut that open as well. And get my knife. Come on. There you go. All right, there's a start. go. All right, let's go buy these one by one. So we have four more dungeon tokens with lots of uh, icons on them. There are some trap tokens here, there's an hourglass token, some effects tokens here, more of these, hit points, and gold. And here is a disadvantage token, which is handy to keep track of all the stuff that happens to you. And they're double-sided, so... Oh no, they're actually not double-sided, so they're, uh, I presume, stacks, and you can randomly draw them. But these are, of course, uh, double-sided. They're printed double-sided, at least. So it says what they are on the back as well. So that's the first one. And the second one has more dungeon tile tokens, more of the same, basically. And then there's another one, more hit point tokens, more gold tokens, more of these, and more tiles. And the other ones were corners, and these are uh, cross sections, or intersections, and here's a big open space. Okay, and here we have more dungeon tiles, some walls here, and a T section. Here is a, uh, a well, a pool of all hydra. And another T section. Okay. We have some more interesting tiles here. We've got a water altar, a fire altar, the oubliette, here's the hatch, and a massacre site. So it's quite handy that all these tiles are actually named on them. And the backs, of course, are all the same. So you know instantly what to look for should you need one of them. And here's some corridors, another wall, a T-section, here's an earth altar. So you get a lot of tiles to mess around with. You can build a massive dungeon with these. There's a furnace room, a guard room with a table and some benches, uh, another T-section, there's an air altar. So we've got an altar for all the elements. Uh, let's see some more passageways, just four passageways with all kinds of symbols on them. Here is a sheet with the uh, hero, this is a hero uh, um, character. There's the air elemental, the fire elemental, the Etten, some more uh, effects, some more of these rune tokens. Some tokens you're gonna need. They're all double sided. So this is second level, first level. And here are the other heroes. So we've got Human Fighter, the Cleric, the Ranger, and the Rogue. More of these tokens. So, yep, yeah, there's a lot of cardboard in this box, which is why it is so big and so heavy. So you get a lot of value for your money and uh, yeah, looks great. Can't wait to play it. And that was the unboxing of Dungeons & Dragons Temple of Elemental Evil. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. 
Please subscribe and see you next time on Board Game Heaven.